Hey, what's going on? My name is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. I wanted to go a little bit more into this HTML5 audio player that I used to create when I created my website when I pulled content from Buzzsprout. In my last video, which I will link up to later on in the video, I did create actually a whole entire website pulling data from Buzzsprout using a Gatsby plugin to make it all work. So it worked great, but I had to figure out how to get the audio into my website. Thankfully, I found a great tool. If I go back, part of the NPMs is that there is the React H5 audio player. I'm calling it HTML5. I'm not quite sure if they how they named it, but I used this little player inside of my browser to actually make it work. I want to show you how I did that right now. All right, welcome back. Yeah, in my last video, what I focused on was the Gatsby Source Buzzsprout plugin. And what this plugin did was it allows you to pull audio from Buzzsprout. So I created a podcast and I said, you know what? I wanted to create some sort of website that made it look a little designy. I really wanted to use my design. And this plugin through Gatsby pulled the audio so I could source the audio URL. And if we take a look at it, and I am gonna link it up at the very top of this little page, that if we go into, let me make sure I get the right GraphQL here. But if we go into GraphQL, and I say, query this, and something, oh, it's an old piece of the slug. I should probably look at what I'm querying before I query it, that's an idea. There we go. There's the ID, and here is the audio URL. So I know how to pull the audio from Buzzsprout, but what I didn't know was how to properly display it. So of course I did a Google search and after about half an hour, I landed upon the React H5 audio player. And my thing is I kind of look at the numbers to see are they going up, they're going down, is everyone using this or am I just the only person that's using it? And thankfully I'm not the only person, which means it's probably working pretty good. And so I found this little audio player. I did install it. I am a Yarn person. If you do watch my videos in the past, you will see that I almost always use Yarn. And so I Yarn added the React 5 audio player. At the very base, all you have to do is the constant of player is audio player. And the source is just the MP3 file. If I fast forward to what I did, up in the podcast episode, I set audio player and source was the audio URL. Now I, for me, the de facto design, if I can find it in here, let me go back over to this website and I'm gonna go over to the homepage. So if you're following along at home, you can do a Google search for React H5 audio player. And I'll also put a link in the description below so you can find this page easily. If you know the person who built this, please give them a big kudos to me because it's great. So yes, by default, the player looks like this. And if I take off all of these little pieces, and I'll explain those in a second, let me just cut those for right now, the audio player by itself should look like this. I did a few extra changes to it as well, which I'll explain that in a second but it basically has the bar at the top and the play, the skip, and the volume down below. So th for me, it was good, but I'm a designer. I really wanted to get in. I wanted to make some changes to this little piece. And after searching around again, I did find where I needed to find it. They had a lot of options down below from mute, loop, volume, all of these pieces. But what really helped me was on the right-hand side, there's a home page, And if I went to this GitHub, there's our famous browser as well. And you can also see that they made an example that they have a whole player working right here where you can click and play music and a contact page. But what I was looking for was a little more customization. And so if I scrolled down on this GitHub page, what I found and what I was looking for in the past from my last video, and I couldn't find it because I was kind of recording live, but they have custom layouts going on here. 
So if I click on this overall layout, so if you're following at home, once again, I was on the NPM JS page. And then on this player, I went over to the right that says home page. And down towards the bottom of the UI props, they have custom icons, custom control sections. And if I click on overall layout, they break down how it works. So the progress bar is progress bar, duration, volume, main controls, additional controls, and loop. So I didn't want everything to work, and I wanna show you what I had to do to make mine work. So I set mine up as a layout. So on the left-hand side, I was looking for a one area basically design, and what I stumbled upon, where was it? Was it horizontal reverse? There it was. I still might change it up again, but for right now, I'm gonna keep it. So I was looking for horizontal reverse for my design. So what I had to do was put horizontal reverse within audio player. And so I wrote layout horizontal reverse. And what that did was is it added, or I should say changed the layout. It helps if I save my project. Let me take out custom controls. And there it goes. So notice how the design is right here, where you have the play and the volume, and then you have the audio going in this direction. And I did take this out twice, but this additional controls just allowed me to take out the skip, which I took out in the CSS later on, so it didn't have to worry about it. But basically, I had a little extra control over the controls. And I like this kind of minimalist design for the most part, so I stuck with this design but they have multiple layouts. You can go horizontal. So if you want to go with the scroll or the progress bar on the left and the play pause on the right and the volume, just say show code and there's the show code. And it's really, it's a great system at work here. But I had some extra issues to be had because it probably coincided with a few things of React Bootstrap. And so if I turn off my additional changes, I have a custom CSS on my design. And so what I did was I noticed by default that this play button kind of hits the bottom of the screen. And I'm like, mm, that's not good. So I realized that there's a flex issue going on, which I probably have some flex changes to be had when it came to React Bootstrap. I didn't test this just on its own. This is working in the framework of React Bootstrap and there's probably something going on. So I did, I did actually just turn, let me go and edit this and comment it out, turn it back on. And what I did was, let me turn these other two off. And it should, nope, it was the SVG file. That's what it was. So I set the SVG to vertical align back to initial. So what this piece did, and let me turn these off by commenting them. There we go. Now it pops up to the top. So I just had a double flex of some sort and it was kicking it down below so it wasn't perfectly centered. And so using my inspect in Chrome, the SVG tag that they use was just creating an issue. I further just took out the additional controls which I put them manually, whoops, let's do that. And this piece with the additional controls of the skip which I also doubled up and in theory, now that I'm talking and talking about it again, I can take out the additional control section right here, but I just put in the CSS to make sure it went away. And the volume controls, I just wanted to justify change as well. This is a minimal piece and notice how it goes to the left versus the right. I'm still working on positioning this area because now that I don't have space or anything in this area, I still have to work to get it centered. I'm a little picky on this part. It's not perfect right now, but I'm still working on it. So notice how the volume controls move over a little bit. There was just for me, I felt the volume controls when they were justified that way, stuck too close to this direction. Again, I'm being a little picky in my design, but the great part about this is that I can be picky. Using the layouts and knowing where everything is, you can have a lot of fun playing and controlling with your audio piece. And so this is how I built my website in part because I really wanted to see if I could actually pull audio from, uh, not React Bootstrap, from uh, 
Buzzsprout, that's what I'm thinking of. The word was escaping me for a second. And I did the same thing too. If I go to a designer who codes site, I did the same layout right here. My thing was, well, if it works on this one, let me just double it up and make it on my second site. But if we go to a designer who codes podcast section on a designer who codes, if I pull up my finder, which I was not prepared for, but I'm gonna do it right now, a designer who codes, source pages, and it's under podcast stuff, because I was tired and frustrated, so I just named it in a very poor name of podcast stuff. Even developers and designers can just get really frustrated and just name things randomly. So in this piece, I did pull the audio URL. Also, side note, because I was not working in pages, I had to do a static query inside of my components for this. And inside of here was the same controls. My source, my layout, and my additional uh, custom additional controls to make it work. But pulling the audio from Buzzsprout was the first part and now it plays and works fine. If I can put my microphone a little closer to my computer. Hey, what's happening everybody? My name is Hayden. And there it goes. So that's how I made my little HTML5 audio player using the layouts that if I go back and uh-oh, this is taking a little while to go back. If we go back to GitHub, there is this whole section that explains how to make it work. And I found this through a Google search using the NPM and audio player. And that's how I made my audio work using the plugin of Gatsby and Buzzsprout to create a website slash blog using the HTML5 audio player. So I'm curious, have you actually worked with audio before in React? Because I'm working in Gatsby, but React is fine as well. Is there a better audio player or has this actually solved a lot of problems for you? If so, either way, I love to hear it in the comments. If you love this video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved this video series and channels, love for you to subscribe as I'm trying to create great design content for HTML5 cross-platform responsive design across all channels. As always, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. I'm passionate about teaching designers how to become better web designers by learning how to code. And my first two courses are up on my website at courses.adesignerwhocodes. These two are all about Gatsby. If you're brand new and you've watched these Gatsby websites, you're thinking, I wanna learn how to use Gatsby. Well, this course is for you. How to set up, build, and deploy your first Gatsby website will take you from start to finish on building your first website. If you wanna take it a step further, then how to build a blog in Gatsby.js goes through the, not just the beginner, but more the intermediate usages of Gatsby. So if you are looking to better your web skills, I encourage you to take a look at these courses, sign up, and become a better web designer by learning how to code in these first two courses about Gatsby.js. Once again, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes.